from Wellington, a flying boat takes off for one of the world's most isolated settlements, the Chatham Islands, about 300 miles due east of the South Island of New Zealand. The aircraft carries government officers and a cameraman who will seek the first moving pictures ever taken of the Chathams. There, our camera sees the islands for the first time since they were discovered in 1790. And as lagoons and lakes cover a fifth of the island area, landing is easy. Such an arrival is a great event in this lonely outpost which has a total population of little more than 600 whites and Maoris. The whole population comes to the township at Waitaki and in a roadless community, the horse still retains his monopoly as a means of transport. The plane's arrival means mail, precious contact with the far distant world. And the post office is a mecca for all as the mail is sorted. The veranda will do, no wasting time in taking the mail inside. Even the advertisements will be read for weeks to come. Although radio maintains constant communication with New Zealand, the mainland still seems a long, long way away. There's a resident doctor and nursing sister with hospital facilities. The hotels might not be palatial, but they're community centers existing without tourist traffic. This is a hard country that calls for hardy stock. A useful memorial to the heroes of two wars is the Hall of Memories. With rain for weeks on end, the country becomes a quagmire, and surveyors from the flying boat are preparing the way for public works, road building gangs and machines to open up the islands. Yes, progress is on its way, and with it will come petrol and road taxes, and maybe other laws from which the islanders are happily free. For a start, they'll have to shoe their horses. Sheep and fish are the main products, rich land that carries five to six sheep per acre, and 10 to 12,000 are shipped out a year. Good stock from this remote outpost of the